The star of TV's documentary series, The Clampers, briefly appeared as himself in a scene especially written for him. It was the last shot, actually, we did on the boat chase sequence. And we just said to them, you know, you're only just going to get a bit damp. And they'd seen all these rehearsals of the boat just coming around the corner, and there's just little drips of water came up over the edge. And so they weren't expecting anything. And then they were working, you know, working away during the shots, you know, pretending to put the clamp on. And then the boat really came around very fast, and it absolutely knocked them for six, soaked them, and they actually got plastered against the with their wheel clamp that they were trying to do. And it was so cold that they, they got up and they didn't know. They forgot their lines, forgot everything, and were just going. <gasps> Payback time. I'm now at the stage where he leaves the river and comes out on dry land. A really long lens is coming to We're getting to the stage now where Bond comes out and we have to divert him now into the fish market. We're going to jump on and do the destruction in the market. So come on everybody, all hands to the deck. We've got half a ton of fresh fish which uh, the set dressing department got from Billingsgate Market. It takes about three hours to actually get the fish in, get fresh crushed ice and place it to the camera. And the one for the next one, but leave the fish. It takes about ten seconds to wreck it. When it looks good, you get a good buzz out of it, but uh, yeah, it's hard work and smelly work especially. <laughs> confronted with making this large action sequence down the Thames and there's the Millennium Dome sitting neatly at the end of the Thames so we wanted to give it a kind of slightly heroic quality in the film so there it is saving my star's life at the end of the opening sequence. This particular stunt is all gauged to be done at high tide there's still a lot of chop on the water and to get the, the stunt correct Gary has to have a lot of speed and then if you've got the bounce on the boat you can be deviating left or right and as you can see it's quite a narrow ramp behind me built into this broken sun seeker and if he did happen to miss it, A, it could flip him over or he could just barrel straight into this seawall which is, you know, total granite. Timing is critical. High tide gives the unit a window of less than five minutes to do the stunt when the water is at its most still. Miss it and they'll have to wait until tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, that's close now, Chris. It's been broadcast on 14. Close, that's a license level. Right, lighting up. Stand and by. And turn over. And actual go. get the speed we needed because of the chop on the water and so we couldn't get the height that we needed so we'll do it again tomorrow. How many boats have we got to wreck? Oh we don't wreck any but we've got six. <laughs> <laughs> the jump which lasts less than five seconds on screen took a total of six days to shoot. The chase itself is one of the most dramatic ever to feature in a Bond film and after seven weeks on the river and as many months in preparation, the first action sequence for The World Is Not Enough is in the can. Thank you very much, everybody. That's a wrap. <laughs>